this type of perigon heating, okay, just a minute. If my patient has this type of perigon heating, normally we cannot save this case because me come like a dentist, okay? I can try to clean it, but I cannot clean it very well because I have a micro do you know micro? Yeah. Microscope? Yeah. Surface. And I cannot clean this microscopic surface. But the microorganisms can enter and can stay in this microscopic surface. Did you understand? Yes. Okay. So these two things are the most important thing to lose in months. Okay. Let's talk about history a little bit. We can see in this uh, picture that a long time ago, a thousand uh, before Jesus Christ and a thousand after Jesus Christ, man always tried to, to complete these three spaces, to close these three spaces with many types of materials, okay? So, uh, let's talk that prosthodontics is so old, okay? But, with success, was a little bit difficult, okay? Like in this case, we can say that it's uh, like a bone, but, pe but people try to close these spaces with shells, or with ceramic keys. So many things they try to close this space. Not too old, but it's near, we can say it's 1930 to 1978. Okay? We used to do that we call fibrous tissue implants. Why fibrous tissue implants? Normally, we have what? Around a tube. Periodontal? Yeah. Liga ligaments, right? Yeah. Sure. Periodontal ligaments. Very good. This type of implants, you can see many types. Uh, we have more types of these. This is it's almost some types. Uh, the idea was always to have what? Fibrous tissue around the metal. Why fibrous tissue? Because it's a soft tissue. And soft tissue looks like what? Periodontal. Okay? That's what, that was the idea. Okay. But there's a, a rule, okay? That we always have to think. If we have power, sorry, power over fibrous tissue, over bone, we have resorption okay if we have power over bone we don't have resorption this I'm telling in a normal power okay not an excessive power okay we we'll are telling about what I say about normal power this is a rule so what happened with this type of implants? Well, research. But you can say me, uh, almost today I receive patients in my operex or something like that, that has, okay, one of these types of implants. 
But in end times, we have a lot of don't lose. Just for you to know, this type of implant that is a uh, way, I don't know how we can say it in English, but uh, uh, I can explain to you. This type is a like a, a pressure in the bone. Okay, what the, they do? They open the bone, make an impression, send it to a lab. Okay, and in the lab, this uh, the technician uh, made this uh, this structure. Okay, this type of structure. Is an alloy structure. A little bit, uh, sorry, straight, but tight, yeah, a little bit tight, yeah, in the bone, just a little bit. For what? For the dentist to arrive there and punch it and it enter with pressure. Okay? That, that was the idea. Just for you to know, for us to remove this type of abutment, this sorry, this type of implant, okay, we have big scalpel, blade, okay, and begin cut all the fibrous tissue. You spend a long time removing this. Okay? Because if you want to try to remove, it will make fracture. Okay? So you have to remove cutting all the fibrous tissue. Okay? That's it. So the idea was always have fibrous tissue around implants. Very good. So that's it. We have bone here, okay, and here we have fibrous tissue. That was the idea. Nowadays, what is the idea? We have fibrous tissue around England. After Dr. Brandmark discovered they get changes. Why? Nowadays we want bone around this titanium. That was the discovery. Uh, nobody knows that bone can grow around this type of metal. Why not? If you ask me, but uh, Marcelo, uh, much doctors, many doctors, sorry, many doctors, many orthopedists uh, use titanium, okay, in, in the hospitals or many things to fix a bone, something like that. Why these screws not disintegrate? Why? If you see a doctor doing surgery, you can see that they use like a, a, a machine, like this size, okay? With a drill, with this size, big one, this big one, okay? And the most important thing, without irrigation, okay? So, that's the first thing that we have to think not to lose implants during surgery. Always irrigating. If we have more than 43 degrees, okay, this bone protein probably will, uh, will lose and you have like a, a cell there Okay, a bone cell there. If you have bone cell there, you can lose your implant. Okay, 
how we lose your implant. We are saying that normally around my implants I want oh. When I lose implants, I have fibrous tissue. So the concept changes. Did you understand? That was the challenge. Dr. Bradmar challenged when he discovered the integration. Why? Because he had to change all the paradigm. He existed this word paradigm. Paradigm, yeah. He had to change the paradigm of the English He had to prove to the world the ideal was not to have fibrous tissue, was to have bone around implants. Very good. This was the first uh, plan of Dr. Grandmar. Almost today, it's not, uh, it's not like Brandmark Protocol. What is a Brandmark Protocol? You have four to six implants are, uh, between this mental foramen, okay? Four to six. The original protocol from uh, Dr. Brandmark is six implants. 3.75 diameter per 10 length. Okay, six implants. And the patient using a denture in the upper jaw. Okay, this is the original protocol of Dr. Brandmark. So that's it. Four to six implants. And here, in the back part, you don't have implant. Why not to have implant in the back part? Because of two things. First thing, if I look my manifold, okay? It's a bedroll, okay? But it's a manifold. Yeah. If, I look, if you look my manual, okay, you have the nerve passing here, and you have the mental foramen here, okay. So, in this front part, I can place implant without problem with the nerve, okay. First thing. And the second thing, and the important thing. Um, Mambo can deflect. Do you know deflect? When you open. So when you open like this, Mambo does like this. Did you understand? Deflect. Sorry? Contract. It's like this. It's not like contraction. Okay? Because of the muscle force. Full metal. If I place implants from here, the back part, to here, and fix it with a bridge, a total bridge, okay? What will happen? The mango will not contract. Or will contract. And it can make fracture the bar, the bridge. Did you understand? Yeah? Thoughts? No? Okay, that's the second part. That's why Dr. Brandmark idealized to place implants in this uh, anterior position. Okay? And why this nature? in the other job because of the power we know that if the patients use a denture 
we have less power. We have less force. Okay? That's it. But nowadays, we can do both jobs reconstruction with implants. But the only thing is that what I talked at the beginning of the class planification. Which type of power this bridge will receive? And other important thing that we have to know we don't have uh, I don't know, but I think it's nociceptor, nociceptors, yeah? Uh, in the, the, the periodontal ligaments, we have nociceptors, okay? Like a receptor, okay? Uh, in humans, we don't have this. So, in the first year, your patient may not control the power over these implants because we cannot feel like a periodontal ligament. Did you understand that? Okay? The sensitivity of the bone is not like the ligament of, uh, the periodontal ligament. Okay? So, if patient use uh, a total rehabilitation over implants, okay, he may uh, bite a stone and doesn't do it. Okay? That's why he can fracture the bar, he can fracture the porcelain. Okay? So, another concept. You always have to know that England doesn't have sensitivity. But, one thing, not for all life. Why not for all life? Because we have bone perception. What is bone perception? During the years, the patients can uh, uh, substitute or recognize this force used by the implants, okay? As uh, how he can recognize this force. Bone has some power receptors, but these power receptors, it's not so uh, uh, not so successful or uh, it's not so good as periodontal ligament. Okay, muscle has uh, have sorry uh, his reception uh, his uh, receptor. Okay, articulation has uh, his re receptor. Okay, what does the body does do? Sorry, unify all the information, bone information, muscle information, articulation information, and say to the brain that in that area you are doing an excessive power then you, uh, uh, you begin to recognize this form. Did you understand? That's why you can see both perception or also perception, like Dr. Brandenburg says. Okay? Uh, in the logo of Dr. Brandenburg, you can see also integration, also perception. That's it. That's the idea of also perception. Uh, uh, just a minute here. So this is a Brandmark protocol. Okay? You have six implants in the anterior area. You can see the mental nerve here. Okay, that's the idea. Six implants. Well, the evolution of the implantology. What happened? 
the first design of Dr. Brandmark was an implant like this. A screw with a platform, okay? But with one thing, this platform was like a circle here. Was not a hex, okay? Was a circle. Why a circle? Because in his original protocol, he used to do it like a bridge, okay? If it's a bridge, it cannot rotate, okay? It cannot rotate. But when we think in placing just one tube, can we have a circle? No. Because when patient begins by, this tube does like this, rotate. Yeah? That's why he designed yeah, this external hex implants. That's why we have this hex over the implant. Okay? That's the idea. This was uh, the original drawing of Dr. Brunner. A sterile hex, okay? Here you have like a neck, threads, okay? And in this part here, we used to have like a hole, okay? Like a hole, like this. But the problem is that if we had some excessive power in this part, could fracture the implant, okay? Because it's a fragile area, okay? So, the technology changed like a, a free space here. It's not a hole, it's like a free space, okay? Very good. This neck, this neck, the idea was that all the power that you have in this England platform, the power may do like this. Okay? That was the idea. The angle power, like this. If I buy it here, okay, the power may do like this. Nowadays we know that this type of power it's not the ideal power. So what happens? This neck changes. So today we don't have this neck like this anymore. It's a straight one. Okay? Why? Because it was a fragile part of the infantry. So if you have excessive power, you may fracture the implant. Okay? During the years, uh, people started to think replacing and lose teeth, okay? With many types of implants. And we started to uh, disinvolve, to, to create, okay? Different diameters of implants. Why different diameters? Because you have a inferior lateral incision, it's a small one. And if you think smaller, you have a big one. So if I place a small implant in a big motor, it's too much power for a less implant, so for a for few implants. Okay? So we created many types of implants, many diameters. Basically, narrow neck implant that we call NP, regular platform implant, okay, 
and white blood form implants. These three sites, basically. Okay. During the years, it appeared many types of implants. Okay, many design of implants. Implants like this. Implants like this. Implants like this. Implants. Like this. Like this and implants like this. Okay? Sorry. Which type are these two implants? Uh, external X implants and a conic abutment connection. This one appeared to red mark system. And this one appears to ITI system. Okay? Differences. We will say a lot of about difference. Okay? But, but just an introduction for you. Difference about them. First, the hex. Why the hex? Because in Brandmark system you have and external hex. Okay? In this ITI system, the idea is not to have a hex. You have what? A conic contact of the abutment to the implant. Okay? It does like this. You have the implant here, and you have the abutment here. When you rotate the abutment, these make a pressure in the wall of the implant. Okay? It does, you, you can do many pressure when you rotate. When you, it makes a lot of pressure, it fixture, you have a fixture of the abutment in the implant just because of the, the, the contact of the Metal. Did you understand that? Yeah? Okay? That's the different idea we have. We call this type like a cone morse in Brazil. Okay? But it's a conic connection. And for us to remove this abutment, it's so difficult. Because the power is too big. And the, the, the contact of the metal is to be two. Okay? Some people say that you can have like a, a foundation. Foundation? Foundation? Uh, yeah, metal foundation. Foundation. Yeah, you can have metal foundation with this two metal just tightening the abutment because of the power. Okay? That's the idea. So, we have different type of implants in the world. What you have to know... Uh, yesterday I gave this example and uh, I'll show you the same thing. If uh, I ask you, you know how to drive a car? You can say me, yes, I know how to drive a car. But if you drive a manual car, or if you drive an automatic car, you have difference. Okay? Implants are the same thing. If I ask you, you know how to place an implant? Yeah. But which type of implant? Did you understand? So, we have to think which type we are going to use in our own practice. 
the idea. Everybody knows all the types of things. Impossible. No. It's possible. I'll show you. For example, us in the combat, we have external heads, internal heads, and we have this conic uh, buffer. Go ahead. So we have three types of different things. Which one you will choose? That's it. That's what I'm going to do today and tomorrow. I'm going to show you which type uh, is the best one for you to use in your own practice. Okay? Which type of power each implant receive by the patient part. Okay? That's the difference between implants. So, if I ask you, which type of implant you use? Ah, I use that one, I use that one, I use that one. Why? Because of the price. Not because of the price. Okay? That's why. Why you have an automatic car and you don't have an, um, a manual car? Why you have a manual car and you don't have an automatic car? That's the same idea. It's not a trademark only. Okay? The trademark must be trust. But the important thing, okay? Which type of implant you're going to use? Okay? Let's go. So, during the years, we can see many designs of implants, yeah? Like uh, this one is not used anymore, this one is not used anymore, this one not, uh, this one not, okay? Difference between them. This one is a titanium one, titanium one, everybody uh, here is metal, titanium. And this one, it's like an aluminum bust, okay, it's a surface. Difference between aluminum bust and titanium. Titanium may grow bone directly to the implant. This bust, you have bone around not directly. Did you understand? You don't have the fusion of the bone to the implant. But you don't have fibrous tissue around this aluminum earth. Did you understand? When we have fibrous tissue, when this bone recognizes this metal as a uh, not uh, yes foreign metal or something like that not for the body okay and titanium is recognized as something for the body that's the difference again. okay this uh, uh, aluminum dust you uh, it's inert inert you know inert it's totally inert it stays like that you have bone around but you not have a fixture Okay, so it's easy to take it up. Different the titanium implant. Okay. That's the the not the important thing, but the part that I that I like always to explain the history of the osteoclation. Let's understand a little about the history of the osteoclation to understand the osteoclation. Okay? Another thing uh, that I want to say to you is that this man, this sir, okay, was 
very responsible man when he discovered the Austin Declaration. How he discovered the Austin Declaration? In 1952, doing a research in a Reddit okay, the idea was to see the microcirculation, okay, with vans and something like that, the microcirculation around a, like a, a screw with this design. Okay? Here he had some threads, okay, and this passed the ball. Okay? That's the idea. Well, oh, very good. Thank you. He placed it in position. A titanium man, like a chamber, okay? A titanium chamber. Placed in position and leave it there. He had done his research. But what was the different thing? Okay? When he tried to remove this chamber, he cannot remove. He could not remove. Sorry. And why? He's a research man. He tried to, to investigate why he could not to remove this chamber. Well, he analyzed all the things and concluded that bone can grow directly to the metal. Which metal? Titanium. Why titanium? We will say to you after. Okay? Why titanium? This was the first step. Well, um, he tried to, to, to do many things with this type of screws. Okay? To replace fingers, arms, legs, everything. And one of the things that he thought was to replace teeth. Okay? And this was the most successful idea. He started doing, uh, drawing this screw and trying to, to create a protocol, okay? And about 1960, he created that type of Bradmark protocol, okay? But this was only research. Well, in 1965, a man called Costa Larson uh, looked for an orthopedist, uh, orthopedist uh, doctor okay, in Sweden, looked for, and he had uh, a problem with his mantle. Okay. This problem could not support a danger. Okay. And this patient want, wanted this doctor, a friend of Dr. Brandmark, indicated this patient to Dr. Brandmark. Okay? And this patient was the first patient in the world treated with a nose integrated implant. Okay? It was in 1965. Well, this was the first patient. We can say that implants can stay all life in moth because this patient died two years ago. Uh, ago. Okay? With the implants, the bone. Good? Okay. Um, okay. Dr. Bradman uh, stayed uh, making some researches and something like that. And in 1978, he, uh, he had 
the health clinical approval of the healthy uh, Swedish health, uh, I don't know the name exactly. So he could practice, all the days could practice this type of integrated implants in his own practice. But this happened only in 1978. Think of me, we have 26 years of research. Okay? But there is an interesting thing in all of this. All of this research, this 26 years of research, was done without telling the world about the discovery. Brand might stay quiet as possible, as quiet as possible, yeah. With this, with his discovery. Okay? Why he stayed quiet? Because he had to change the paradigm of the ontology. He had to show the world that the idea is not to have fibrous tissue, is to have bone. Okay? And in 1982, in a Toronto conference of the American Academy of Gerardon College, but it was in Toronto, Toronto, Canada. Dr. Brandmark arrived to the world and showed that this is an awesome integrated implant. The protocol to use is this, 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 this. The surgical kit is this. Blah, 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 blah. And I, important thing. The most important thing, I have 30 years of research. Okay? So that's why I like to, to tell this history. And that's why I always have to say that this sir was so responsible for his discovery. I used to say that it was with me. Next day I was in the television, saying to the world, yeah, I discovered the world, yeah. No, he stayed 30 years doing research before showing the world. Okay? Very good. And this man is living in Brazil too. <laughs> Very good. Let's understand us integration. The definition of os integration is direct and collage of the bone to an implanted body. Direct and collage of the bone to an implanted body. So the idea is direct and collage. So we don't need more fibrous tissue. We have bone. Directing to the metal. Well, another thing which can provide a foundation to support the bridge. That's another important thing. It can provide a foundation. You can. You have to have. You have to have. You have to support a bridge over this foundation. It can transmit. Occlusal power directly to the bone, not more directly to the fibrous tissue. That's the idea. Some people say that uh, us integration is like a clinical evidence. Evidence, okay? Why a clinical evidence? Because when you place an implant in the bone, Okay? You cannot take it up, send it into a lab, make a histologic analysis, okay? A histologic analysis, then place it in position in the bone of the patient. Why this histologic, histologic analysis? To see if you have bone around the metal. 
Okay, did you understand? We cannot do this. So what we do to determine if our patient has uh, osteointegration around this method? We have many uh, type of things to diagnose this case. X-rays, okay, punch like this, okay, to hear the sound. You can do some torque power, okay, twist power, because you see, if you have fiber, fibrous tissue, okay, it may take it up, you can take it up. If you have bone, you cannot take it up. Okay, so we have clinical appearances to define that we have osteointegration around this metal. Okay, so that's why we say that this metal has to support a bridge. Okay, that's the definition of osteointegration. Another guy said that, and this is an important thing too, a functional and directly, a directly anatomic union between fresh and important remote bone. Why remote bone? Because when we place an implant and the bone grows around this implant, Okay, we have one type of bone. When we load this implant, the bone change. Okay, the bone adapt to this new situation to become a little bit more resistant because now it has power. When you place the implant position, you leave it there without power. But now we have power after gold. Did you understand? So we have remote bone. Okay? Another uh, magnificent thing. And this last guy, Dr. Schroeder, was the, the, the guy that idealized the ITI system. Okay? He defined uh, a integration as a functional ankylosis. Is it correct? Uh, yeah? Okay. I have a history that it's, it's, it's so fun. Uh, during my graduation, I had uh, the implant the, uh, discipline. Okay, discipline? Yeah. I had the implant discipline. One year of implantology discipline. Study England in my graduation. Okay. Before I finish the year, a month before, one of a, a, a friend, a classmate, like one of the classmates, stand up with her hand. Okay. Teacher, it's not dangerous for this titanium to have an antibiotic in the book. Imagine that a teacher during the year explaining about os integration and in the end of the year I guess said like this it's not dangerous to have an antibiotic. So it's an antibiotic. Okay? But a functional antibiotic because it may support a bridge. Okay? That's it. Very good. What a material need to have to be a dental implant? It may have biological compatibility. Okay. It may have mechanical or mechanic compatibility. Okay, it may support power, may support load. 
functionality sure is the definition of the operation easy to manufacture okay why easy to manufacture because it's it not becomes so expensive as easy as possible it becomes a little bit cheap okay so oh sorry we have a, an accent here so we can have the titanium yes we can have the titanium because we have all of these characteristics okay can I choose can I, can I change sorry yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about titanium. Let's understand a little about titanium. It's so important for us to understand titanium. Okay? Normally, if you only want to place screw in the bone, okay, uh, it's not the idea because you don't know what happens with this titanium. We don't know what happens with this bone. Okay? But when we be begin to study in ontology, we begin to understand okay, about titanium. And we begin to understand some concepts, some fundamental concepts about implantology. Okay? Okay. This was the first guy that discovered the titanium. Titanium is a metal provided by principally two types of mineral. Okay? This mineral can be called Cutilo. We have the name after, okay? Cutilo and Eumenita. Okay, we have the name after. Um, this two type of many minerals can provide the metal titanium. Okay? In 1930 and 1940, okay, it started the commercial process. They started to to uh, to manufacture this type of metal for commerce. Okay? The titanium is, is used principally in chemistry, industries, okay, and aerospatial industries. Why? Because it's resistant and it's, um, I forgot the word right now, but it's not heavy, light, light, yeah, so it's light too. Light and it has very good resistance, okay? That's it. In, in 1965, we started to use in osteoporation. The most important thing for us. Uh, sorry about steel, but it, it's, it's steel, okay? We need one more E in the word. Okay. 60% of the steel weight, so it's a light, a light metal. Very good mechanical properties. One important thing, corrosion resistant. Why corrosion resistant? What we have inside the body? Blood, water. If we have corrosion, how can we place a metal inside this bone, this body? Okay? Very good. Temperature variation resistance. For us, it's not too important. Because the, this variation is only when our, our patient takes some cold thing and hot thing. Okay? It's not too much. Uh, different forms to manufacture it. It's easy to manufacture. Okay? A little bit different than a ceramic. 
okay? Because ceramic may fracture a little bit more. Um, aerospatial and chemistry industries are the most uh, useful in the world. And we have titanium grade 1 to 7. But we know in new research that we have, principally in Russia, Russia that we can see 1 to 19 types of titanium. Okay? Difference between them. Um, the purity, purity, yeah, purity, yeah. Okay, the purity of the metal. We will talk about these two. Let's wait a little bit more for people finish. Yeah. Thank you. Almost at four o'clock. Okay, we will stop a little take a little coffee or to go to the restrooms, okay? But just a few, okay? We have, we have to close it uh, at 5 yeah? Yeah, okay. Um, just one thing. I preferred to do a lecture like this, showing the disintegration, showing the implantology, and inside with, uh, the, the lecture, I'll show some products of the company and something like that. Okay, I think it's good for you to understand, to relate, and uh, to do the relationship between the product and uh, the, the concept. Okay, very good. So, if we not finish today this class, okay, we will finish tomorrow. It's a sequence. Okay, very good. Um, let's go. Main sources, these two minerals, Cutilo and Eumenita. You can look for it in Wikipedia, okay? In the internet. Sixty percent of weight and forty percent of steel density. Something interesting. It's a tube metal. Do you know what is that tube? Yeah, look like a bubble gum when you do like this. Okay, you know bubble gum? And yeah, when you do like this, this is the ductibility. And another interesting thing, it's easy to take fire, to catch fire, catch or take? Sorry? Catch? Yes. That's why. When we are manufacturing it, we have to have many oil, okay, to refrigerate the metal. Because we have, if we don't have many oil, it may catch fire. Okay, very important thing. Uh, resistance to sulfuric acid, fluoridic acid, and major of organic acids, acids. Sorry. The importance of this because some types of surface treatment we use ACE. Okay? Some types of ACE. ACE. Okay? That's why it may have an ACE resistance. Okay? Okay, about my English. Okay? Uh, it's physiological inert. Okay. Then I'm going to do a question. Some people say that titanium uh, it's not physiological inert. It's physiological uh, active. Okay. What do you think? Who thinks that uh, titanium is active? Please stand up hands. Okay. I heard. Put that cake, Yeah. 
Okay, I'll explain it to you. The metal, titanium, is physiologically inert. But the oxygen layer of the metal, okay, oxygen layer of the metal is Did you understand the difference? We will talk about the oxygen layer, okay? We will talk about it. Uh, 60% more weighted, weighted than the aluminum, but two times more stronger. Excellent mechanical properties. Corrosion resistance like platinum, okay? And you can use very temperature resistance. This is the commercially pure titanium. Okay. I said to you that we have 1 to 7 and nowadays we know 1 to 19 grades of titanium. Normally in mass integration we use grade 2, 4 and 5. These three grades. Okay. Um, titanium grade 2 we have 99.75% of titanium. Okay? 0.05% of no, sorry, 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 sorry. Titanium grade 2. 0.03% of iron. Okay? Uh, no, no, no. Just a minute. <laughs> Just a minute. Okay? Titanium grade, grade 2. 0 0.03 of iron. Okay? Then you have 0 0.10 of oxygen, 0 0.03 of nitrogen, carbon, other things. Titanium grade 4. 99.75% of titanium. 0.05% of iron. You see the difference? It's a minimal difference, okay? But this 0.02% makes difference in resistance of the metal. Yes, this one is great for. Okay? Do you understand? Very good. Titanium grade 2 was the ideal for Professor Brandemar. Okay? Titanium grade 4 was the ideal for Dr. Schroeder, the ITI man. Okay? Another type of system. Nowadays, that in titanium grade 2 we can have 98% of success in mass integration. In titanium grade 4 we have about 97% of success in mass integration. So you have a few difference, but the resistance of the titanium grade 4 it's, uh, I, I cannot say bigger, but it's better than grade 2. Did you understand? Okay. That's, that's why many, uh, most of the companies in the world are changing titanium grade 2 to titanium grade 4. Okay. And uh, Marcel, you said, sorry? Are you saying 38%? And grade 4, you have 97%. 1% less. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. 
the most important thing when we talk in implants. Okay? Sorry. What we see is that, as we see, the fabrication of dental implants, dental implants, it is procedural to be completed as we see this one. So, is it the, the procedures can be changed according to the individual or not? Uh, like the typical processing I, I didn't understand that the About the dental plant, the bit of dental plant. As we see, the procedures, uh, the complete of the dental plant, it takes this one important. It is the changing of uh, it is procedural to be completed by this one according to what you say. Is it the, the it can be changed according to the individual or not? It can be changed why? 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 Uh, we can change the design of the implant. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Uh, because how I said you, implantology in the world is the most studied area in dentistry. Okay? And during the years, concepts may change. Did you understand? Concepts may change. Like, I can say you, I will talk about this. First implant uh, that Brandmark idealized was only a machine surface. What is machine surface? It's a, a flat surface. Okay? It, it, it's not a rough net surface. Did you understand? Was okay during the years all the research proved that the ideal is the roughness surface I'll, I'll, I'll say about this okay so uh, what can change the design and uh, the, these modifications of the implant so, uh, are the research yeah the research along the years that's it it, it was what you, you asked yeah? Okay? Sorry, I... Okay. Is, uh, is it by the, by the age or what? By the, the change, the change, by the old age or by the like 20 to 25 or 82, 75 to the age, yes, that's what I want to know. Yeah, watch time it changes. Okay, okay. Uh, normally, what happened? It's a, I, I cannot say you that there is a time. Why? Because um, Brandmark idealized to to do uh, this machine surface. Okay. He started to do blah 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 blah. Well, but another company started using Brandmark.